Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Hebrews chapter 4. And this is one of them hard chapters. Let us therefore fear. In combination of chapter 3. Says, so we that they could not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Fear. Fear that unbelief will get, not get you in. Least a promise being left us of, etern, of eternity that entering into his rest. Now we've been looking at the Old Testament. We've been looking at the Jews. The rest is the promised land. Many people died before, did not get to get to get in the promised land. Many children will have to live lives unto their parents, their grandparents, and the elders of that group died off before they got into that rest. So, when we're dealing with the book of Hebrews, we're dealing with Hebrews and their history. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Like the fathers. They died in the wilderness. They didn't get in the land. Now, this is not salvation in the church age. Sir, the church age salvation is not, oh, I hope you get to the end, and when you when you get to the end and you die, you're saved, you know, are you saved or not? It's not the case. For unto us, Jews, Hebrews, was the gospel preached, all right? That's now. The present time that Hebrews written, the gospel. The gospel wasn't preached in the Old Testament. There was no gospel. There was no good news. Good news is that Jesus Christ died for their sin, according to scriptures. He was buried, and he rose again, according to the scriptures. What are those scriptures? The Old Testament scriptures. That the Jews know. Preach as well as unto them. Now, some don't say Gentiles. But the word preached did not profit them. It's because Gentiles did get saved. That we are in a church, we are in an age of Gentiles and Jews. So for unto us the Jews was the gospel preached as well unto them. You run that back to those because of unbelief do not enter in. There are Jews in the book of Acts where the gospel was preached and they did not believe. And in their belief, we know they died and went to hell. Being mixed with faith in them that heard it. They heard the gospel, they did not believe. And in their belief, they died and went to hell. For we, the writer and the people he's writing to, which have believed, run back to verse 19, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief, Verse 3, we which have believed. There's two people. There are believers and there are unbelievers. Do enter into rest. That's present tense. Rest is eternity. The Old Testament Jews saw that rest in the land. The new rest we're looking at, we're going to come across this in a minute. The new rest we're looking at now is New Jerusalem, Jesus Christ. 
As he said, God said, as I have sworn in my wrath. What was the wrath? They died. The ground opened up and buried them. Fiery serpents were biting them. If they shall enter into my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. That foundation of the Lord is Jesus Christ. For he spank in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his work. Now let me, let's, let's, okay, Hebrews. We saw Moses. We saw the high priest. We saw Jehovah Creator. We have been looking at things that Hebrews know. What did Hebrews, Hebrews Jewish Israelites know? They knew about the Sabbath. It was only revealed to those, to Moses. No one knew about the seventh day arrest until Moses wrote Genesis and read it to the Israelites after Exodus 20. No Gentile, no Abraham, no Isaac, no Jacob, no children of Jacob ever honored the seventh day. Until it became law in Exodus 20. So now what are we doing? How can we get from Hebrews to Gentiles? We can. Because Paul does not ever speak about when he's writing to the church. He never speaks about the Sabbath day. The Bible speaks for us the first day of the week, not the seventh day. Seventh day Adventists and all those people that follow that seven day of rest, they're wrong. They're anti-scriptural. They are trying to steal the promise from the Hebrews. That's a sin. Because the Jewish people are God's people of love. And never Gentiles. So now what are we looking at the Jews? What do they know now that is found in the book of Hebrews? That we can say for sure of surety in chapter 4. The Sabbath day. There it is. That's not Gentile. It was never Gentile. So here is a subject matter written to people who know the Old Testament. Who are the children of God. Guess what? So, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left of us entering into its rest, the seventh day. The Sabbath day. There was a Sabbath let rest of the land every seven years. Any of you should seem to come short of it into the promised land, the wilderness. And unto us was the gospel preached, Jesus Christ, as well as unto them, those who rejected but the word preached did not profit them. They did not listen. They did not obey. They died in their sins and went to hell. Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. There was no faith for them. And for we which have believed do enter into rest. Heavenly Lord Jesus Christ. A new rest that is outside the rest of verse 4, the Sabbath day. In the eternity. The new heavens, the new earth, new Jerusalem. There are no more days. You can't say the seventh day in eternity. There is no seventh day. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, that's Old Testament, Sabbath day, the, rest, the land, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Jesus Christ finished the work that needed to be done. That Old Testament law, you know what it did? It showed you you were a sinner. And if you did obey the law, if you did do what God told you to do, you went to Abraham's bosom. And Abraham said, hey, you know, Lazarus rests me. He's sleeping. Don't disturb him. Samuel said to, to Saul, why would you bring me up from my sleep? I was sleeping. They never, no Jew in the Old Testament that after Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose from the dead, no Jew went to heaven. <laughs> They went to Abraham's, Abraham's bosom. What were they looking for? David and them. They were looking for a piece of land. What were they looking for with Jesus Christ? Conquer Rome and take over the land. Not going to heaven. Not at all. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, the land, the Sabbath, Jewish, and it's written. 
It's written. It's written. They're showing the Old Testament to the Hebrews for martyr, for what's going on current events through Jesus Christ. They are showing the gospel. They are showing these Jews that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the scriptures. He's the fulfillment of the high priest. He's the fulfillment of the Sabbath day. He's the one that gave the Sabbath day. He's the one that created everything. He was there the seventh day. He's better than Moses. He's better than the house of Moses. So therefore, it remains that some must enter therein. Not all. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. The rejecting Jews. The rejecting of Jesus Christ. They did not get in. They are in hell. Again, he limits a certain day, saying to David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. That's three times that's been said. Chapter 3 and chapter 4. What is the warning? Now, let, let me say something. This is three times. Let me get serious then. I can't say much about four. There's things in here. And I may be teaching wrong. Could be. Well, here's a warning. If you're going to hear the word of God, do not harden your heart. Now, let me put a warning to those that are in the ministry. You better preach that word, and you better preach the word as it is. You better not add to it. You better not subtract to it. You better not water it down. You better not put candy in it. You better not put whipped cream and a cherry on it. Because that word says, today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, the word of God is the voice of God. Harden not your hearts. When you tell people about the gospel, you better have the correct gospel. You better not do anything void of what the word of God says, because their actions will be based upon how they react to what you say. It's very important. You can't water it down. The word of God will... will what a man does will either go to hell or go to heaven. And if you water it down, add, subtract, footnote it, make it so little children can hear it, make sure you know you got nuts and, and sprinkles on it, you could damn someone's soul. There are people who say, Jesus, didn't we do this? Didn't we do that? Didn't we do this? Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Now, wait a minute. Aren't these the people the gospel was preached to while Jesus was on, on this planet and they rejected him? And he says the final word, but Lord, didn't we do these works? Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. It's not the works. It's nothing you can do. Even though they were in a kind of half law, kind of half grace with Jesus Christ, it ain't your works no more. That law is gone. It's been finished by Jesus Christ. careful what you preach for if Jesus had given them rest they would then would he not afterwards spoke of another day now that Jesus Acts 7 45 that's Joshua we are back here we are again into the promised land Moses dead Joshua goes out Rally up some food. Get the ark ready. Get the trumpets ready. We're going to cross the Jordan River today. And the Bible says Jesus, Jehovah saves. So what we're doing is we've gone chapter 4. We've gone from that wilderness journey. We are going into the promised land. Joshua did that. But we spoke of another day. What's that another day? When Jesus takes those over into New Jerusalem and the new heavens and the new earth. Joshua is going to happen again. Those Jews are going to be taken out of the tribulation period as they were taken out of Egypt. Under Pharaoh, who's a type of Antichrist, Satan, Jesus is going to take them out. He's going to pick them up like Moses in Salem Petra and drive them through the highway. 
and no Moab and no Edomite and no Amorite is going to say no. He's going to bring him right through. He's going to cross over where Joshua crossed, where John the Baptist was baptized. He said, these rocks I can make the children, something like that. And those rocks, he probably pointed where Joshua laid those rocks. It's going to happen. You know, what, you know what they're saying in Hebrews right here? Do you know your Old Testament history? Yes, we do. We've been talking about it. Well, guess what? Your Old Testament history for future Jews are going to be current events. It's going to happen all over again. You're going to go back in Egypt. You're going to go back under hard bondage. And they're going to kill you. And they're going to drink your blood like Catholics do. You want to get out of that? You can get out of that right now. Believe on Jesus Christ, the gospel. And Jesus Christ will take you to a greater rest. You won't be going to Jerusalem. You'll be going to New Jerusalem. How's that? The gates are 12. The gates are the foundation. Which one? Are 12... Uh, tribes in the book of Israel. How's that? You'll be standing before Jehovah and Jesus Christ for all eternity with crowns. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterwards have spoken of another day. There's another day coming. That material, physical land that they got, they lost, they got, they lost, they got, they lost. You know, the only time, only time they ever had that full land was under David and Solomon. But they lost, they got, they lost, they got, the kings messed up, the kings got right, the kings got messed up, the kings got right. There's something better for those Jews. It's the Messiah, and the Messiah has come. The Messiah has died. The Messiah was buried, and the Messiah rose from the grave, according to all the scriptures, friends. You want to talk about that Sabbath rest which they never obeyed? They never did? What about a rest that Jesus Christ will give? How about no pain, no sorrow, no suffering, no agony, no defeat, no sin? How's that? How's that for a rest? How would you like to just sit back for all eternity and have nothing go wrong that's going wrong with you on this planet right now today? Anybody. You don't need to pray in heaven. You don't need to ask God to comfort for anybody. That's a rest. That's an ultimate privilege rest that God has given us by Christ suffering for our sins and our iniquity. We get a rest by Jesus beaten. We get a rest by Jesus being nailed. We get a rest by Jesus back being plural but like a, a plower's field. We get a rest by Jesus being punched and his beard pulled. I've had my beard pulled in, 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 in fun a couple of times. And man, it, it, it's, it hurts. There remains therefore a rest to the people of God. See, that's us. That's where you can apply it today. I'm a people of God. I'm a child of God. I'm getting a rest. And it's much better than the Old Testament rest. Because what happened to the people in the Old Testament? Did they die? Well, I'm not going to get death. If the Lord tarries and I die, and I go be absent from the body and present with the Lord, I'm never, 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 never going to die again. Never. That's a rest. And like I said, add to that rest, no pain. I was talking to somebody in the church the other day. Can you imagine when we get to heaven, are we going to remember what pain is just to thank the Lord? Can we not ever think about what life will be without even having a thought of sin? Never mind doing sin. Never. Again, great. For he that is entered into his rest, that's me, he also has ceased from his own works. I can't do it. And that rules out the Jew. There is no bringing a, 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 a ram. There's no bringing a goat. There's no bringing turtle dove. There's no bringing your wheat. There's no bringing anything to that tabernacle. It's done. You know what we're going to start getting up to as we go further in Hebrews? I know for sure. We're going to get to the one sacrifice of Jesus Christ that is settled forever. But we have to teach the Jews about the Creator. We have to teach the Jews about the high priests. 
We have to teach the Jews about Moses. You see what we're doing? Now we're teaching the Jews about the Sabbath. We are showing them the Old Testament and Jesus Christ. You know, if, oh, what would it be? Is it Sunday? If you had a male child born, I think it's Sunday. Eight days. Or Saturday. Well, anyway. If the eighth day was a Sabbath, that boy would still be circumcised. He had to be circumcised. If you're going down the road and your animal or your neighbor's animal falls into a ditch on the Sabbath day, listen, Jesus spoke about it. Don't you lift them out of the pit? Don't you help them? We're getting to a Sabbath day where it's going to be no more pits. No more surgeries. How's that? As God did from us. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. After we're saved. Crowns, rewards. After you're saved. There is more you can get in that rest. When it comes time that we are praising God and those four and twenty-four elders cast their crowns on. Are you going to have a crown to cast? I think, I think it's Brother Bear or one another preacher. He, he preached a great message one time. He goes, we're going to be casting our crowns down. It. And he thinks we're going to be like a bowling ball machine. They're going to come rolling back. What they do with the bowling ball. But are you going to have a crown? You know what will you get a crown for? You can say, Lord Jesus, here's my crown for all I've done for you. Or you take, you ain't got a crown. Jesus, I didn't do nothing for you. I took my rest here on planet Earth. I didn't wait to get to heaven to rest. See, you can rest now on this planet and do nothing and get nothing in heaven. Or you can work now and then get your rest later and get praised by Jesus Christ. Least any man fall. So you, the writer does not want us to fall. Some falls are lethal. Some falls do great damage. When you're elderly and you fall, you have a bad thing for, for hips or knees or ankles. Fall is a prevention, a warning for all. <laughs> a lost man will fall into the lake of fire. We don't want falls. And then when the brethren does fall, we want to help them up. And I think as he class, he, uh, uh, saw, uh, Solomon said, when you fall, isn't it great to have somebody to be there to help you up? A husband and wife, the Bible says, where two get heat, but still, when a husband falls, the wife can help him up. When the, when the wife falls, the husband can help her up. They found people were falling in their houses all alone, and how many days it takes the body to start smelling from decomposition then they realized oh that person fell down and there was no one to help for the word of God is quick make a lie bring a resurrection make you well and powerful how powerful is it I can remember one time when we when my son and I we went door knocking we're carrying the Bible. All we got is the Bible. We go knocking on the door. And everybody in this house is scattered as far as that, that front door they can. If I had Avon, if I had a magazine, they would open up that door. Hi, how you doing? What do you got for us? Powerful. When I get to street ministry, I go down there. I open up to John 3.16. And, and boy, did they know who I am. Powerful. You ever have the Bible convict you? You ever have the Bible speak to you? And sharper than any two-edged sword. Ooh. Sword is used to cut, to poke, to defend. Offense. It's called the sword of the spirit when it comes to our, our weaponry. 
It's the Holy Spirit. So the Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. My wife's version is, it's the sword of the Spirit. So guess who God is and guess who the Holy Spirit are? With her verse in, in Ephesians chapter 6 and Hebrews 4.12. God is Jesus. God is the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is God. They hold the same book forward. Piercing even to the dividing, that's the Christian life. You gotta divide. Asunder of soul and spirit. Also, later on, you, you'll learn that, of the soul and your flesh. That spiritual circumcision we get. But the word of God is important to your soul and your spirit because that's the eternalness of you. And that's what, hey, the word of God is what can give you eternal life. Not baptism. Not jujubes. Not beads. But the word of God. The word of God says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You do that, your soul is saved. And of the joints and marrow. I don't know why it says joints and marrow. That's something physical. What the word of God has something to do with your with your body joints and your marrow and your bones? And yet the Bible is called the milk of the word. Peter, that's calcium. Honey, it's called. That's a natural sweetener. It's Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. That that's your starch. Water of life, Jesus said, because we know Jesus is the word, the word is Jesus. Water is, is your natural liquid for intake. Would you? Jesus is our rock. Our rock? Iron, iron is our rock. Iron? And we need iron to go blood yep. in your bar. I got, I got, hold on, over here in Peter, I got a list over here, let me, all right, <laughs> milk, oh, wait, milk calcium, First Peter, Two, two. He's meat, protein, Hebrews 5, 12. Psalms 119, 103, he's honey, sugar. Proverbs 25, 11, apple, apples, that's your vitamins. And then Luke 4, 4, that's your bread, your starch. Now the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. That's physical. Piercing is the divine and asunder of soul and spirit. And joints and morals, that's physical. Would it go so far to say that reading the Word of God, the Word of God is helped to you? You take it. Joints and marrow is a physical thing. Now watch it. As a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, there's the spiritual. So the Word of God attaches your flesh by the spiritual circumcision. It attaches your joints and marrows. It attacks your spirit, what you think and what your heart is. You got to read it. And then you get people that take a sword and cut it all apart and take a pen and add to it. Imagine imagine you go into an operating room and here's a doctor and you see a doctor and he comes to you with a Swiss army knife. Oh, I'm going to operate you. No, oh, no, no, no. But that's what these modern Bibles are. They got all these different other gadgets on it. Where God just has a sword. And he knows how to use that sword. And that sword is also the same sword that the angel of the Lord held. Said had a sword in his hand when Balaam's ass started speaking to him and tried to stop Balaam. Isn't that interesting? That sword was going to kill Balaam if he kept on going. Neither is there any creature. What's that? Mark 16, go in all the world and preach the gospel to all creatures. There you go. There's a cross reference. That is not manifest in his sight. The word of God. Run that his back to the word of God. Run it to John 1.1. 1, 1. The word of God is going to make you manifest one day, either saved or lost. You're going to be standing at the judgment seat of Christ. This is the word of God. What did you do with it? We're going to know. We're going to know if it held up your TV. We're going to know if it stayed in your back seat. We're going to know if it collected dust. We're going to know if you ever brought it to uh, church. We're going to know it compared to how many TVs and Bibles you got in your house compared to the people. We're going to know if you read it. We're going to know if you studied it. It's going to come out. Great White Throne Judgment. 
Like I said, I'm only going to use my I use myself in these videos all the time because I only know what I do. They're going to be there are people that hear me preach the word of God. They're going to stand at the great white throne judgment and they're going to hear me say the gospel. And the gospel that I preach to them is going to preach back at them and they're going to be manifest what they did with the gospel being preached. That's how important the word of God is. Now, how would you like to see someone at the great white throne judgment come up with the word of God and it's from you out of your mouth and you watered it down? You're going to have blood on your fingertips. Wet macaroni. Not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him. Run to his sight, run to the word of God. With whom we have to do. Now that's an interesting remark, verse 13. Whom we have to do. Everybody you came in contact with in your lifetime, did you give them the Word of God? How's that? It says, Go every creature. Excuse me. Mark 16 says, Go in all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Whom we have to do. Did you do that? We're going to be judged on what we do with the Word of God. In our own lives and the lives around us. Seeing then, after what we just read, 12 and 13, seeing then that we have a great, would Jews know high priest? There he is. There's another high priest reference. This is nothing new to preach. I mean, this is nothing new to Jews. They knew about the high priest. That is passed into the heavens. Name me one high priest that went into the heavens. That did not go to Abraham's bosom. None. So we got to be talking about another high priest. Jesus, the son of God. How's that? There he is. Let us hold fast our profession. What's our profession? Jesus Christ. Hold fast. That's the one. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. You got infirmities? But was at all points tempted like as we are. You got infirmities? So does Jesus. Are you hurting? He hurt worse. Have you sinned? He took on every sin in the world. For the Lamb of God was take away the sin of the world. Uh, I'm going to just pick a sin. Lie. Let's say I lie. Well, write down on a piece of paper all the sins of all the world. And that's what Jesus took. All of them. Okay? There is no trouble that Jesus ever... Wait, I'm going to say this right. There is no trouble that you can suffer that Jesus never suffered. There is no sin too greater that he can't take care of. You can never go beyond what Jesus could, could, could help you and comfort you because he's going through it all. Let us therefore, now watch this one. Now, read, now think of the Old Testament while you're reading this. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. The throne of grace. That's God's throne. That is by Jesus Christ. What did the Jews have in the Old Testament? That the high priest had something to do with. He had the mercy seat. And he could only go in there once a year. One day in a year and twice. One for his own sin and one for the sin of the people. And that's it. You never went in there anymore. But the day of atonement or you're dead this verse says let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of God it doesn't give you what day it doesn't give you what time and it doesn't tell you how often and this is a throne of grace he went to the mercy seat we got grace by Jesus Christ there's no veil into the holy place there's no veil into the most holy place. I walk right in into the presence of God anytime I wanted, 
anywhere I want to go before God and bring any petition I have to God. Matter of fact, the Bible says that Paul says we are already seated in heavenly place. You name me one Jew that had that promise. Not even David. Not even Moses. And Moses was before God on the mount. But not in heaven. Verse 14, seeing then that we have such a great high priest that's passed into the heavens. S. NASA can't even do this. I go further than NASA does when I pray to God. Matter of fact, I'm there. That we may obtain mercy. Oh, there's the mercy, see? And my high priest went in there and ripped the veil right behind him and said, come on in. The fellowship's great. Any Jew that uh, was a king, is a king Asa, he went in there and started offering incense and he wasn't supposed to, and he starts getting leprosy. I don't get leprosy going in the holy place. And I don't become the matchbook twins of Aaron's sons when they offer the strange fire. I walk past that rip veil, go right in the mercy and say, Father, I'm your son. Come on in. I'm only here by Jesus Christ. Sit down. How's that? This is a much better rest than the Jews had, isn't it? You are standing before God the Father, Jehovah. And there's your high priest, Jesus Christ. And we are in there because of him. And find grace to help in time of need. Wow. What promise do you have of a Jew for that? Look at the nation of Israel situation and condition when Jesus showed up. They were infested with devils, leprosy, blindness, deafness, lunaticness. That's a word. We, as newborn babes in Christ, by the new birth, growing by the word of God, we can learn that we can go where no Jews gone before. Television has that all messed up. To go where no Jews gone before in the Old Testament, and that is before Jehovah himself, and say, Father, by the mercy and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come here, I have a petition. Now let me ask you a question. When we read the story of John the Baptist, I can never remember his father's name. At that point in time when he was in the holy place, what was that time called? As the people were outside. That's called the time of prayer. Only one man could go in that sanctuary. Everybody else had to stand in the outside. Luke chapter 1. All right? I can step into the mercy seat, and I've had troubles in my, and problems where I've gone to people in church. I've gone to people I know on Facebook. We all come together, and we all walk through the holy place. We all walk into the most holy place, and we all say, Father, this guy has a petition. I go before God and say, God, I know someone's got bad eyes. He wants his eyes fixed. Lord God, I know someone's got a bad heart. Lord God, can you have And you know what that makes me? Ready for this one? I'm not a Levitical anything, but I'm a priest. I have now taken a position that no Jew but only one family could do. I have become a priest. Now, with that, with that statement of the Old Testament Jews, one tribe, let me show you something. All priests were Levites. I'm not a Levite, but I'm a priest. But not all Levites were priests. So now we're looking at the priest class of the Old Testament, and by Jesus Christ, I become a priest. I become greater than the high priest through Jesus Christ, because I have now gone through both those veils. I can walk in a holy place, light that candle of the Holy Spirit. 
I can pray with that incense altar, and I can sit down at that table with six and six bread and read, and walk into God's place of being and say, Father, let's have sweet fellowship. And Father, you see that you see my brother right there who's here with me? We're saved. We are in your presence. Lord, he's got a problem. I want to pray for him. And he'll turn around and say, that guy, my brother and Lord, my sister and Lord, who are here with you, Lord, they got to say, we're all being priests for each other. So forget the Roman Catholic priest. I'm God's priest. I am God's priest by Jesus Christ. I just don't call myself Father. Even though I am a father. 